In this video, I'll show you how to make this material in Godot with a custom fragment shader, which imitates raindrops landing on a surface. If you just need the shader resource, you can grab it from the link in the video description. To make this material, we'll also need a texture, and we'll be using the free tool Material Maker to generate that. Material Maker and the texture I use here are both linked in the description. As usual, I'll make this shader as a visual shader, but I'll go over a written version at the end as well. So let's start out with a fresh project in Godot. We'll uh, start out by creating a 3D scene as the root and uh, creating a mesh instance. And we'll select a plain mesh and we will assign it a new shader material. And we'll select a new visual shader. And now we are ready to work on our shader. But before we can really get going, we'll need a texture. So I've opened up Material Maker here, and uh, all we'll need uh, for this texture is a bunch of little radial gradients in one channel and a bunch of random values that represent each of those uh, gradients in another channel to offset them with. So um, for that we can use a, a Voronoi texture. So uh, we'll use this. We need um, more points, so I'll just set the scale up to 8 instead. I also need the gradients to extend a bit uh, further so I'll just set the stretch amount here to dot five. Uh, so that's the the value I need in the first channel. So to put it into a channel I can uh, export out. I'll just use a combine node, and then you can see it's ending up in the red channel. And then for the the other channel, we need one of these uh, channels from the random column, but we only need uh, one of them. So we'll just do a decompose like that and then we have our texture ready. So uh, then we can just right click on the on the preview here and select the resolution we want to export in and go to our folder and we'll just call that crops.png and save it. And then if we uh, we go over to Godot we have the texture ready here and we just need to ensure that the import settings are correct. So we want it to be lossless, so that's correct. And then we want mipmaps on because it's going to be used for a 3D effect and we'll just disable sRGB. Okay, so back to the shader. Let's uh, select our mesh instance again here and select the material and we have the shader. So to start with, we'll need a texture uniform so we can uh, load in our texture and we'll need to connect that um, to the output for it to show up as a shader parameter. So now it shows up here and we can load in our texture. Okay, so to start working with the two channels uh, in our texture, we'll have to start out with uh, decomposing um, the texture into the two separate channels. Um, so. Uh, we can work with them separately and here we have the radial gradient so how do we turn these into rings instead well an easy way we could do this would be to uh, do a, a one minus this will uh, invert uh, the gradient and then do a uh, minimum operation um, on the original gradient and on the inverted gradient so if we have a look at this we actually have rings. They extend quite far out, so it's a bit difficult to see. Um, one problem as well is that they actually only reach from zero val values up to uh, 0 0.5, but we want them to go all the way up to 1. So we'll just uh, multiply by 2. And uh, let's have a look at that. Okay, so we have rings, but they're way too big. So to scale down the rings, we need to... Um, increase the speed at which the gradients uh, increase. So we could do that by multiplying by a bigger value, but in this case I'll end it um, divide by a smaller value because that'll sort of make more sense for controlling the, the width. So if we uh, divide this value by uh, dot one and then use that value instead uh, for these two, then we have a much smaller ring. So if we uh, then replace uh, 
uh, dot one with a scalar uniform, and we can call that uh, ring width. Okay, and then we can control the the ring size with the uniform. Now, uh, after doing this division operation, we unfortunately end up with some values that are um, um, outside uh, the zero one spectrum. Like, uh, so we need to clamp the values. Um, so we'll just do that here um, at the end. You'll actually, uh, you'll probably actually see this change that the values almost look too black now, and there they go back to being normal instead. Now this looks pretty good, but I don't really like um, that the rings are in a linear gradient. So uh, to make them look a bit more natural, I'll use a smooth step operation. And uh, now we don't want that to go into the edge. We actually want that to go into the driver in X. And yes, we want edge 0 to be 0 and edge 1 to be 1. And if we put that in here instead, we get a much smoother gradient. It'll be a bit clearer in a bit. Now, how then do we expand the rings? Um, this is actually really simple to do. We just have to subtract the value from the initial gradient. So um, we can try that out with the scalar uniform again. Here. And we'll just move that up. Subtract. And we'll subtract here. And to put it in there. Yep. And then we can expand the values. So that looks great. But of course, we don't want to um, to control this value with the slider. We want to run it uh, directly inside the shader. So um, instead, we'll try and use uh, time to do it. The problem with time is that that's a global time. So it keeps counting up. So that'll be a really big number. Um, but uh, it's very easy to make it a little number that goes between 0 and 1 and repeats and repeats by using the frac function. We can actually see that if we uh, click here, you can see it just keeps going. And if we put that in here, then we have rings expanding. Now, of course, we don't want all the rings to expand at the same rate. And that was why we have this uh, second value here. So if we uh, just uh, use an add operation and then uh, we can move these around a bit. If we then add time together with these random values before we put them into the, the frag function, then suddenly we have this, and they're, uh, they're all offset by each other. And now the effect is almost done. We just have to um, make the rings fade out when they expand. Um, I'll just move around some of the nodes so I have a bit more room to work with here. Um, so this is pretty easily accomplished. We we can basically just uh, take um, this uh, value and invert it because this is uh, going from 0 to 1 and making the ring expand. But um, if we take its opposite, then it's going from 1 to 0 and we can use that for fade out. So uh, we'll just do a, a 1 minus on it. And if we then um, do a multiply, the original output here and we should get fade outs but they're not really fading out fast enough um so we'll do a similar trick as we we did before we'll just take the the function here and we will divide it and we'll use a Scalar uniform and call it um, fade out. Oh, and if we use this, then it'll look black. But if we do this, then we're getting the right effect. But uh, we run into another issue where we uh, we need to clamp the values. So we'll just do that afterwards here. And now we can uh, control how long it takes before they fade out. Dot two probably looks about right. And uh, now the effect is almost done. 
The only thing we need to add now is uh, some control for the color. So if we add um, a color uniform, you can call this uh, water. And we can make another one and call that uh, rings. And then we can just do a mix is node. And we can just put these two in here. And we can drive them with our mix here. And then everything is back. So we find a good watercolor blue and a good ring color white. And there you are. We've uh, finished the whole thing now. It's doing really good. So uh, I've also included a written version of the shader um, and it's very much the same. We, we set up the same uniforms and we read in the texture, uh, use the gradient from the R channel. Uh, we set up a uh, time uh, value where we add in the the uh, value in the green channel uh, and we fract it. Um, we do a fade out which is a negative version of that uh, divided by the fade out value. Uh, we expand uh, by subtracting the fract time. We uh, make the ring width by dividing. Uh, we need to clamp as well. Uh, we, here we use the smooth step. Um, I do the uh, the minimum of the the gradient and the negative gradient uh, multiplied inside the smooth step, but uh, it's the same stuff. Um, we multiply by the fade to fade it out. Do another clamp, and then here we we mix the colors based on uh, uh, on on the ring, which is basically the combined output we had before as well. And then uh, as a little bonus, I've made a, a separate version of the shader. Uh, which is a little bit different because it uses normal maps instead, so we can have a look at that. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, so uh, basically if you want a bit of a homework, maybe you can look through this and see how it works, or see if you can figure it out. Um, but it gives a really nice effect. Thanks for watching. If you like this tutorial and would like to support me in making more tutorials and open source projects like my good add-ons, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks to my patrons, Little Mouse Games, Winston, Johannes Wunsch, Space Chase Zero, Dimitri Keen and Marcus Richter.